Ladies and gentlemen of the Brave Nation, welcome along to Brave Combat Federation 62 in association with our friends Octagon live from beautiful Almaty, Kazakhstan. My name is Phil Campbell. I will be your commentator for the night and I am joined as always by my broadcast partner, the OG of Mixed Martial Arts, a man who has forgotten more about the sport than I could ever hope to know. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Kirik Janess. And Kirik, before we dive into the fights, I want you to tell the Brave Nation a little bit more about just how important it is for us to be here in Almaty, Kazakhstan and the warrior spirit that runs through this town. Phil, I can, I can answer that question from about 10 different directions and they're all completely valid. But one that I would like to hit on is, this is gonna take a little bit back, a little bit of background, Brave Nation, bear with me. Wrestling and mixed martial arts are fundamental sports. They are in our DNA, not just as humans, not just as mammals, but as living things. If you watch a video of two kangaroos wrestling and fighting, of two, two lizards wrestling and fighting, you can actually call points. Other animals, they don't play cricket, they don't play football, they fight. Mixed martial arts and wrestling are at the very heart of who we are as people. Now, with the rise of mixed martial arts, nations, cultures are discovering that they have indigenous equivalents to mixed martial arts of their own. In this particular country, the great, great, great nation of Kazakhstan, it's called Zepkizek. They've been doing mixed martial arts here for millennia, and now, through the popularity of mixed martial arts, the, that sport, that indigenous sport, has regrown. It's increased national pride here. And as someone who is promoting mixed martial arts in this country, the fact that that has led to an increase in the warrior spirit here, an increase in national pride, brings me no small measure of joy. Well, let's dive right in to our Brave CF 62 main event. We have Olyas Kipchak Iskariev taking on Rolando D. And this, for me, is a fight worthy of its main event status. Kirik, let's talk a little bit about Iskariev. He came into Brave Combat Federation in Almaty, Kazakhstan at Brave 53 and had an absolute war of a fight. Came in on short notice, defeated the former lightweight champion, Lucas Martins. And then recently at Brave 59, he took on a fighter that most other fighters had been hiding from. He took on Kubanichbek an unbelievable fighter. He fought him for five consecutive rounds and whilst he may not have won the decision, he won the hearts of the people watching. Kerrick, just how important is it for a global promotion like Brave Combat Federation to have a Kazakh fighter in the main event? Phil, I'm gonna take that one in the same direction. I took your last question. Olzas is an exponent of an indigenous Russian martial art called Sambo. Once again, it wasn't really realized until mixed martial arts came along in 93, but there are equivalents all over the globe. This man is a master of sport and combat sambo, which basically is MMA. There's some little tweaks here and there that are different, but it basically is MMA. He's a master of sport in it, and he is gonna bring one masterful game tonight. Well, a fighter that is going to be standing in his way to try and prevent that masterful performance is the man himself, the fighter's fighter. Rolando D. Incredible. Now, Kirik, 2020 was an incredible year for Rolando D. 2021 and 2022 have been considerably harder. It is true that he is on a three fight losing streak, but he is undoubtedly a true warrior inside the Brave Arena. One thing I wanted to put to you is what kind of pressure does that put on Rolando D coming in on that potential four fight skid? Can he afford? to lose another fight. For me, it really is do or die for D tonight. Phil, I'm gonna answer that by speaking to all of you Filipino fans in Brave Nation. You are my favorite fans in the entire sport. I'm speaking right now with an Irishman. The Irish have phenomenal MMA fans. There is nothing like a Filipino fan. And who is our greatest Filipino fighter Rolando D. Every nation we go to could be in the MENA region, could be in Sub-Saharan Africa, could be in Europe. The Filipino fans turn out and there are going to be Filipino fans in there cheering for their man and I believe they're going to carry him to victory. 
personally looking at this fight, I'm incredibly excited at the prospect, but I think the most dangerous type of Rolando D is a Rolando D that is backed into a corner. So an incredible fight and prospect. Let's dive straight into our co-main event of the night. We have Nurzan Akashev taking on Memosh, the renegade Raza. Akashev coming in with an incredible record, 13 and four as a professional, 12 of his wins coming by way of finish, 10 of those finishes in the very first round. But he's taking on an, an, an equally incredible fighter in Mamosh Raza. But Kirik, the interesting X factor in this fight for me is the fact that Mamosh has not competed since October of 2020. He's had a number of issues. Obviously, the pandemic had a profound effect on many professional fighters, but he also had a serious surgery. Now, coming into this fight, Kirik, is cage rust potentially going to be a factor? That's a great question, Phil, and we're going to know it very, very early in this fight. I want to point out to all of you, great fans in Brave Nation, that during that two-year span, when Memo Shiraza had zero fights, his opponent had four fights. Now, there's a sweet spot in mixed martial arts. It's an axiom in this sport that everyone fights hurt. Everyone fights hurt. When you take two years off, you're not hurt. The, the tweaks in your back and your shoulders, the surgeries that you need, you had them. The question is exactly where is that sweet spot? Off the top of my head, I think two years is a little bit too long. The good news is it takes about one round to undo that ring rust. And after that, you're right back to normal. Speaking to Mamo Shiraza in the lead up to this fight, he is infectious with his positivity but when he gets inside the brave arena when he gets inside that cage he is full of bad intentions an incredible cool main event but let's talk about another feature boy we have camille magomedov taking on ahmed shivaniev this for me is a fight all about nuance you have magomedov who is an incredible submission grappler but in shivaniev you have a fighter who is an incredible all-round wrestler. Let's have a little bit of a look at Camille's record. He is 15 and two as a professional. Every single one of his victories have come by finish. 13 of those wins have come by submission. He is a former World Cup grappling champion. But Kirik, talk to me a little bit about the nuance in this fight. The submission grappler taking on the savvy wrestler, as we know more often than not, the wrestler dictates where the fight happens. Magomedov is going to want to get this fight to the ground. However, in order to do that, he is going to have to get through that wrestling defense of Shervaniev. Phil, I am a mixed martial arts purist. And from that point of view, not from the action point of view, not from the pre-fight trash talk point of view, but from the purist point of view, this is my favorite fight of the night. Mixed martial arts was born from jujitsu. But over the years, now over the decades, it's now been a full generation, 29 years. Jiu-Jitsu is starting to disappear. It's, it's moving further and further back. It's harder and harder to see. Kamil Magomedov makes Jiu-Jitsu work. He has brought Jiu-Jitsu back again. And what is Jiu-Jitsu designed to do? It's designed to neutralize the most terrifying people on the planet hold on hold on hold on and then take advantage when a tiny mistake is is, is made and in shivania what do we have we have a terrifying fighter from team ahmad i think the most telling point of this fight is going to be the first takedown attempt from Camille. Will it be defended by Shervaniev or will he be able to get his man to the ground and go to work from there? Another feature bout that has everybody in the MMA community talking is that of Mortaza Talha taking on Kirill Kaminsky. Again, Mortaza Talha again has this almost air of boogeyman-like quality about him. He has that X factor. He is 5-0 and o as a professional, 12-0 and o as an amateur. So he's currently riding a 17-0 and o unbeaten streak. He is a two-time IMAF Amateur World Champion and an IMAF Amateur European Champion. Kirik, so far, Murtaza Talha has been largely untested on his way to 5-0, and o, leaving an absolute trail of destruction in his wake since making his pro debut in November of 2019. 
What does the 8 and 2 Kirill Kaminsky have to do to get this momentous task on his hands? What does he have to do to try and best somebody so far who has not been bested in amateur or professional mixed martial arts? Phil, I'm going to say something that I have never said in front of Brave Nation. I don't know. I do not know the answer to that good question. I'm not sure Helmut does either. There's an old saying, never bet on a fight until the weigh-ins. At the weigh-ins, he looked a little distracted, a little bit unfocused. Missed weight two times before he finally made weight. Murtaza Talha is the strongest raw fighter I have ever seen. I've been involved in this sport professionally since the very beginning, since 1993. I have never seen a stronger fighter. Brave Nation, when the fight begins, when they first make contact with each other, watch the opponent's face. Every single fight Mortaza has been in, there is a moment when the opponent feels that strength and there is a look of, of shock, of surprise, dare I say, of terror at exactly what they're facing. And it must be said, Mortaza Talha coming out of uh, an MMA super power gym. He's coming out of KHK Team Bahrain. His style is informed by one of the best coaches in mixed martial arts today, Eldar Eldarov. So when you have someone like Eldar Eldarov in your corner, that's even intimidating for your opponent to look across. Another interesting factor in this bout is the fact that neither man has been to the judges in their professional career. So do not blink when this fight goes down. One last fighter to touch on is Abdullah al Khatani coming in with an incredible kickboxing and Muay Thai background. Five and oh as a professional. Kirik, talk to me a little bit about the type of qualities this young man is bringing into the Brave Arena. Hey, this is such a Brave Nation. This is such a hard card for me because there are so many fights that I want to tell you. It's my favorite fight. And this is one of them. I just love this sport from so many different angles. We're talking about a fighter that wins every single time and never loses in fights that he should lose. He had one fight. We were holding a Brave Combat Federation show in Jeddah in Saudi Arabia, brought him on the card. Very unusual to have a professional fighter with just one fight on the card. Matched him up with the Egyptian zombie, a man ranked in the top 10 lightweight, ranked in the top 10 featherweight in his home of Egypt. There was absolutely no way that the Ripper was gonna win and he won and he has gone on and done that in every single fight. He steps up, it looks like the odds are against him and they are not. I believe this man is gonna win it. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. An incredible night of fights for your viewing pleasure taking place right here in beautiful Almaty, Kazakhstan. My name is Phil Campbell, joined as always by the OG Carrick Janess and this is Brave Combat Federation 62 in collaboration with our friends Octagon. The fighters are ready, I'm ready, Kirik's ready. One last question to ask you in the words of the legendary Carlos Kramer, are you ready? Stay tuned for the fights. Are you watching closely? What captures your eyes? What elevates your mind? Can you feel it? The spirit of roaring warriors Echoes through the arena. This sport is amazing. It's very difficult. The takedowns. The submissions. The knockouts.
gods and inner demons dance together. All for greatness. A sport that is the ultimate pursuit of mental and physical prowess. It is the tears in victories and the pain in losses that lead us to the edge of our emotions. A heroic transcendence. The grasp of this immersive experience exceeds all nerves. A captivating story that resembles a vision. To celebrate the true spirit of sport in its full glory. A heart that is of fighters, coaches, spectators, organizers, sponsors, partners. A sport that is the embodiment of your true self. And this is Brave Combat Federation.